So in this question, what we're going to do is we will divide this given figure into two halves, like this. Okay, and then we'll discuss separate uh, these two halves and two separate cases, case one and case two. Okay, but before going that, let us also assume one thing that the um, that the linear mass this this complete chain has a constant mass distribution has a constant mass distribution such that lambda is a constant throughout the chain okay which means this complete chain will have a constant linear mass density of lambda what does that mean that that's more important to understand it actually means that say mass of 1 meter of this chain will actually be equal to lambda into 1. Okay, mass of 2 meter of chain would be equal to lambda into 2, so on and so forth. That's the, that's the physical implication of it. Now let's see what do we mean, what do we mean by uh, the two halves. So it actually means that when we discuss case 1, when we discuss case 1, we are going to look only about the the length l and not the length l minus l so we don't we don't consider this half of the chain okay we consider only l chain so what is the length of this chain it is l what is linear density it is lambda therefore what will be the mass of chain of length l it will be equal to lambda l and this mass we will call it as m1 we will call this mass as m1 okay you may have little of doubt that would clear be clear now so in case 2, in case 2, I consider only L minus L and therefore I am not interested in this part of the chain. Okay. Here, what is the length of the length of the overhanging chain? It is L minus L, right, on side 2. And what is the linear density? It is constant throughout the chain. It is lambda. Therefore, what will be the mass of chain in L minus L length? It will be lambda into L minus L. So I'll call that value as I'll call that value as M2. Alright. Now keeping this in mind, what I'm going to do is instead of considering this chain up this side of the chain with length L and the other side of the chain with L minus L, I will consider say side one, side two. I'll consider side one with mass M1 and side two with mass m2 can i okay if, if that much portion is clear now i'm going to slowly replace this chain with a see uh, there might be some logical issues here because you are all of a sudden you're saying that chain is converted into a um, um, a string then how where, where the tension come up how does the tension evolve um, th those kind of um, doubts may come up but we're just assuming it to be okay now what I've done is this chain of mass m1 can be considered as a string connected to a mass m1 all right this chain of say any length of mass m2 can be considered as higher a length of uh, sorry a chain of or a string of higher length a greater length with mass m2 tied on it right then what i do is i draw the free body diagram of both these figures now assuming that m2 is heavier m2 will come down and definitely m1 will go up right so when you consider when you consider m1 when you consider m1 you observe that the net direction of motion is along the positive y axis right because the object is going up m1 is going up so all the forces which are acting in the direction of the net direction of motion which is upwards here the, those will be positive which means upward acting forces will be positive and therefore tension here is tension here is positive right so it corresponds to it corresponds to weight being negative why because weight is acting downwards right so the first equation what we get is tension t 
is equal to okay let us let us stop it here t minus m is equal to m n a m n is equal to m n a now if we discuss about m2 what what we see is tension so okay some of you may have a doubt here so how do you mark tension tension will originate from the point of contact and it will go away from the point of contact right and how will you mark weight here weight of a body will always pull that body towards the earth weight of the body will always pull that body sorry will always pull it towards the earth so you will have two different forces one is tension going away from the body then is m to g acting downwards and what is the net direction of motion here net direction of motion is downwards so all those forces which are acting downwards should be taken as positive all those forces which are acting upwards should be taken as negative and therefore we have minus t by minus t and m to g which means the sum here would be minus t plus m to g is equal to m to a how many equations do we have here this is equation number 1 right and this is equation number 2 what i'll do is i'll write them separately all right and then i'll add these two equations but before adding it what i'm going to do is uh okay right we'll we we'll, i'm sorry my bad we'll add it directly so t minus t is 0 right and all what is left is m2 g minus m1 g is equal to m2 a plus m1 a i can take g common from these two terms so if i take g common what i get is g is into m2 minus m1 m2 minus m1 is equal to a into m2 plus 1 therefore a is equal to m2 minus m1 by m2 plus m1 times g now what is m2 here exactly what is m2 so we have m2 is equal to lambda into l minus l and what is m1 m1 is equal to lambda l now what we'll do we'll substitute these values in this equation okay and when we do that we get is a is equal to m2 minus m1 by m2 plus m1 times c what is m2 lambda into l minus l what is m1 lambda into l and if you open the bracket we get lambda l minus lambda l minus lambda l by lambda l minus lambda l plus lambda l i'll uh, cancel off lambda from the whole numerator and denominator so what you get is l minus l by l minus l plus l l plus l is zero so what you get is l minus 2l by l is equal to a and according to the given condition when l is equal to l by x which means if instead of l i write here instead of l if i write here l by x sorry capital l by capital l by x then what will be the value of a a therefore becomes a therefore becomes g by 2 wait i'm missing something there's g over here right this is into g this is into g into g g to g into g yeah okay so now now what i can do is i can cancel out g and g on both sides right so what we get is 1 by 2 is equal to l by l is 1 1 minus 2 by l into l by x right so this further gives us half is equal to um, or uh, okay half is equal to 1 minus l by l is 1 is equal to 1 minus 2 by x right so half minus 1 is equal to minus 2 by x which implies minus 1 by 2 is equal to minus 2 by x and therefore x is equal to x equal to 4 is what we get